Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will be reviewing how z-scores are important to inferential statistics. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the role that z-scores play in interpreting results of research studies. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. Z-scores form a standard scale of measurement, which makes it easier to compare different scores. Since the shape of a normal curve is standard, then we can apply the known percentages under the curve to determine the likelihood that something will happen. Combining what we know about both z-scores and the normal curve will help us in interpreting the results of any study. The z-score itself indicates the number of standard deviations that a score is above or below the mean. This graph shows the known percentages under the normal curve for two standard deviations above and below the mean. For example, z-scores that fall within one standard deviation above and below the mean occur approximately 68% of the time. However, extreme scores like those beyond two standard deviations in the tail of the graph occur approximately 4% of the time. These known percentages that correspond to specific z-scores will be important in interpreting results. Let's introduce an example to explain the role that z-scores have in inferential statistics. In an example handout posted on Canvas, I reviewed the relationship between populations and samples when conducting research, where this graph was provided. I will briefly review this graph using a real-life research study from Problem Set 1A. Question 2 of that problem set discussed how Casper and colleagues in 2014 were interested in how selexin impacted anxiety. Selexin is an herbal medicine consisting of concentrated lavender oil. Surprised, huh? Well, let's say we want to test selexin on college students. Basically, the college student population is just too big to conduct a research study on. So we will select a sample of college students who are anxious and not taking any medication to treat their anxiety. We do not want anyone already taking anti-anxiety medication in our sample because it would skew the results. We will then give this sample, Selexin, 160 milligrams daily for eight weeks and then have the sample take, let's say, the Beck Anxiety Inventory to determine their anxiety levels. Afterward, to determine whether selection worked, we will compare our sample results back to the population to make conclusions about our research study. Still using our hypothetical study with selection, now let's get more specific about how to compare that sample to the population to really understand if our research study worked or not. First, if our sample who had selection has an anxiety score that looks similar to the population who did not have selection, then the treatment for selection had no effect on anxiety. In other words, our sample who had the drug and our population who did not have the drug had similar scores, meaning nothing's really going on here. On the other hand, if the sample who had selection has an anxiety score that looks different than the population who did not have selection, then the treatment for selection had an effect on anxiety. I can imagine some of you are wondering right now, so where do z-scores come in? We can use z-scores to determine if the sample data is noticeably different from the population. Recall that z-scores around zero, or around the mean, are pretty common or expected. However, if the z-score is an outlier, an extreme score, this is not very common or expected at all, which could indicate that something might be going on with your data. If the sample and population look similar, then the treatment had no effect. We would then expect to see z-scores near zero or not noticeably different. 
recall that z-scores within one standard deviation of the mean occur approximately 68% of the time, which is totally expected. The graph would have z-scores around the mean, which is highlighted with red axes. Now, on the other hand, if the sample population looked different, then the treatment probably had an effect. We would expect to see z-scores of plus 2 or minus 2, which are considered extreme outliers and are noticeably different. Recall that z-scores that are two standard deviations from the mean occur approximately 4% of the time, which is not very common at all. The graph would have z-scores in the extreme tails of the graph, which is highlighted with green arrows. In summary, because z-scores in normal curve are standard, we can use the known percentages under the normal curve for specific z-scores to help interpret results of a research study. Z-scores serve as a transition into inferential statistics, that is, drawing conclusions of a research study, and are an important Lego building block in understanding statistics.